one follow-up on, on Tom's remarks. He said that uh, the White House could be putting together a supplemental. Do you have a sense of when you will submit that to Congress? And then secondly, can you confirm reports that the President is, is, is leaning towards or deciding to end DACA, and what are the ramifications of that for the DREAMers? Uh, I'll take your the first question uh, in terms of supplemental funding. As Tom said, uh, we're working with Congress. We're not going to get ahead of Director Mulvaney. He is uh, working with them around the clock to make sure uh, that process moves forward quickly and effectively. Uh, in terms of DACA, uh, echoing again on what Tom said earlier, final decision on that front has not been made, and when it is, we will certainly inform everybody in this room. Cecilia. Okay. In January, the President said that dreamers shouldn't be worried. So can you stand here today and say dreamers should not be worried? Once again, when we have a uh, final decision, this is under review. There are a lot of components uh, that need to be looked at, and once a decision is made, we will certainly let you guys know. Glenn. Sarah, there, there's a specific report out by Fox that talks about, uh, that says essentially a decision is made to, to uh, uh, roll back the program by the end of this week and that there will be provisions uh, allowing uh, dreamers from in the country right now to, to stay until their uh, work authorization expires. Can, are you specifically denying that report? Uh, no offense to uh, your colleague uh, from Fox News, but I think I'm a little bit better informed than they are in terms of when the White House has made a decision. And as I just said a moment ago, it has not been finalized, and when it is, we will certainly let you know. Hallie. Two questions on Glenn. Can you at least talk about the timeline here? You've got these dates that said September 5th is when they will begin to do this court action. That's obviously the Tuesday after Labor Day. So does that mean that some decision will be coming down tomorrow before the holiday weekend? Can you at least talk about the timeline for this for those folks who are wondering what their status is going to be here? Uh, again, I'm not going to get ahead of something and be presumptuous when a decision hasn't been made. I, uh, we don't know when the final review is going to be completed, so it would be disingenuous for me to create a false timeline that simply just so that uh, isn't workable. Is not, you guys are there there are a lot of conversations around the timeline and when that has to be made, and again, that hasn't been fully reviewed and vetted and decided. And just one more on Harvey, Sarah. There's obviously been a huge outpouring of support from people all around the country for the victims of Harvey. You've seen people lining up to volunteer. You've seen people donating tens of millions of dollars. Can you speak to what the president and his family have done regarding donations for Harvey Relief personally? Uh, yes, I can. I uh, had a chance to speak directly with the president earlier, and I'm happy to tell you that he is um, would like to join in the efforts that a lot of the people that we've seen across this country do. Um, and he's pledging a million dollars of uh, personal money to the fund. And he's actually asked uh, that I check with the folks in this room, since you uh, are very uh, good at research and have been doing a lot of reporting into the groups and organizations that are best and most effective in helping and providing aid. And he'd love some suggestions from the folks here. And I'd be happy to take those if any of you have have them. But as I said, he'll pledge uh, proudly a million dollars uh, of his own personal money to help the people of both Texas and Louisiana. Thank you, Sarah. Previously, the president had said that he may return to Texas and may also go to Louisiana over the weekend. Uh, do you have an update on the president's travel schedule? We know that Vice President Mike Pence is there today. And if the president is going, where might he go? And will he meet with the back police while he's there? Uh, the president and the first lady will be traveling both to Texas and Louisiana on Saturday. Uh, the specifics cities and locations are being finalized. Hopefully we'll have that information uh, for you later today. I believe as of right now, tentatively, he plans to be in the Houston area of Texas and possibly uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. But again, uh, you know, varying on conditions, that may change a little bit. That, but that's a tentative plan and at this point. On taxes before we move on as well. Yesterday, the president went to Missouri to push for tax reform. He has said, the administration has said that they'd like to see a bill before the House of Representatives in September. But there's differences between where the administration is and where uh, House GOP leaders are. Do you still expect that to happen in September? Uh, as we've... As we've said before, um, this is going to be a big priority for the administration, certainly moving through the fall. Uh, the, the biggest part is that we make sure that we get it right and that we provide tax relief to middle class America and that we help Americans across the board. That's the goal. Uh, and if we can do that by September, that would be great. Blake. Sarah, picking up on that, with the president hitting the road yesterday, he made it seem as if this should be a simple bipartisan fix. However, Democrats 
are saying that there should not be tax relief for those who are the wealthiest 1% of earners? Does the president believe that the wealthiest 1% uh, the president laid out clearly what his big priorities were yesterday. I'll be glad to repeat those. Uh, permanently reducing tax rates, encouraging entrepreneurs to invest, simplifying the process, uh, incentivizing American companies to bring back jobs and profits. The president is focused on helping all Americans across the board. The biggest priority he has is on helping middle class Americans and making sure more of those people keep more of their money. The White House thinks working with Democrats on this is, is reasonable or likely. I mean, they're already laying down the marker for where they stand. You just said for all Americans, presumably that includes the top 1%. I, I would love for uh, Democrats to want to help all Americans. I don't know why they would ever want to be against that. Certainly helping more Americans have more money that they worked hard to earn in their pocket. I don't know anybody that would want to be against that. So Sarah, hopefully they, they will be reasonable and want to come to the table. Sarah, Sarah. Matthew. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, I have a tax reform question, but first just quickly about that charitable donation. Will that be coming from Trump personally as opposed to the Trump Foundation? or the Trump organization? Uh, I, I know that the president, he said he was personally going to give. I don't know uh, the legal part of exactly that, but he said pers his personal money, so I would assume that comes directly from him. And on tax reform, if I may, um, Secretary Mnuchin said earlier that the administration is going to release a blueprint on tax reform that will then go to Congress. When can we expect that? How much detail will that go into, and how is that is that a change from letting Congress take the lead on actually drafting the legislation? Uh, again, as, as both members of the administration and the president said, our job is to lay out the core principles, the primary pillars that we want to see in tax reform. It's Congress's job to legislate. So we want to work through that process and allow them to actually do their jobs. We're going to do our jobs and lead the conversation, set the table, set the priorities, and let them do their job and legislate, get it passed so that the president can sign it. John Decker. Uh, I, I think we've already been laying out a lot of those principles. That's the foundation, and we'll continue to add to that. John. Thanks, Sarah. Is uh, this push for tax reform the priority for the president and the administration right now? Have you put uh, the repeal and replace effort to the side um, for the moment uh, to focus exclusively on your tax reform proposals? Uh, as the White House, I don't think you ever get to exclusively focus on only one issue. It's certainly one of the top priorities for the administration moving into the fall. Uh, but as we've said many times before, we can walk and chew gum at the same time, and we plan to uh, push through a lot of different things throughout the fall. John? Uh, just one thing, uh, Sarah, if, if I may. On repeal and replace, as you know, you receive no Democratic support in either the House or the Senate. Uh, as far as tax reform is concerned, are you expecting a different result? Do you think you can get Democrats to support uh, some sort of legislation that comes forward from uh, both houses of Congress? As I said a minute ago, I would certainly hope so. I don't know why any Democrat would be against wanting to provide tax relief for uh, hardworking Americans, particularly those in the middle class. Uh, I think it would be uh, a very sad and a big mistake. John Gizzi. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Um, just one question. Just on, one. Just one on uh, politics. Um, the president gave a very strong endorsement through Twitter of Senator Luther Strange in his bid for nomination in the special election. Uh, the runoff is coming up in September 26th. Uh, there have been published reports that the president is backing away from that endorsement and not taking sides, which would make him the first Republican president in 47 years not to back an incumbent senator for uh, another term. Um, is he as committed to uh, Senator Strange, or has his position changed since the original primary? Uh, due to uh, the legal restrictions that I have. I cannot answer anything uh, political from the podium, so I have to leave that uh, to outside folks and the president himself to answer that. Sarah, Catherine, oh, Sarah, welcome um, back. Today in an interview, he said, um, was asked about his plan to put Harriet Tubman on a $20 bill. It was vague in his answer. During the campaign, um, the president called this pure political correctness. Is the administration reversing those plans to change the twenty dollar bill? I'm not aware of any uh, policy change. Uh, I'd certainly have to check into that. 
Peter. Sorry, I promised I'd come back to you. On DACA in February, the president said he would treat dreamers with heart. Does the president stand by his statement to treat dreamers with heart? Uh, absolutely. Um, the president stands by his statement. Uh, right now, this is currently under review, both from a legal standpoint, primarily, uh, and until that review is complete, again, as I answered before, we don't have anything to add further on that Would front. rescinding DACA be treating dreamers with heart? Again, I'm not going to get into a back and forth until a decision has been made on this front. Quickly, the Hold on, let me today. come to him, and if I have time, I'll, I'll, go, right after, I'll go right after Chip. Then. Yeah, I think to uh, Russia for a moment with the decision to the See, announcement See, he jumps today. in there for you. <laughs> the, the announcement Teamwork. today. Um, uh, by uh, the State Department on closing three facilities in this long tit for tat that has been going on with Russia. A lot of analysts now say that uh, relations between the U.S. and Russia are at the lowest point since the Cold War. Do you agree with that? And if so, whose fault is it? Uh, look, right now uh, we're requiring the Russian government to close its consulate general in San Francisco, a trade annex in Washington, D.C., and a trade annex in New York City. Uh, these closures have to be completed by the September 2nd. Uh, we've taken a firm and measured action in response to Russia's unfortunate decision earlier this year. We want to halt the do downward spiral, spiral and we want to move forward to be towards better relations. We'll look for opportunities to do that, but we also want to uh, have equity in uh, the decisions and anything beyond that. I, anything beyond that, I would refer you to the State Department. Are relations worse than they've been since the Cold War, or at least in decades? Uh, I don't think so. The but came in uh, determined to improve relations with Russia. Look, and, and, I, and as I just said, we're going to look for opportunities to do that, but we're also going to make sure uh, that we make decisions that are best for our country. So Sarah, thanks. Um, Senators Grassley and Graham uh, revealed today that they have evidence suggesting that former FBI Director Comey um, made a decision to not charge Hillary Clinton uh, several months before the uh, investigation actually wrapped up and before they interviewed Hillary Clinton. Uh, does, does the president know about this, and does he believe that that adds weight to his decision to fire Comey? Uh, I'm not sure if he is aware of, of that uh, revelation, but if it is as accurate as they say it is, I think that uh, would certainly give calls uh, and reason that Jim Comey was not the right person to lead the FBI, and hopefully uh, all of your colleagues will follow suit in covering that story. Zeke. Thanks, uh, I just want to go back to Tacky real quick. Um, you mentioned the president laid out a bunch of core principles. One of those, presumably, uh, the, the effects of whatever the tax plan is on the budget. Um, has the White House taken a position, a position on whether the tax plan needs to be rev revenue neutral, or is the White House willing to accept uh, a tax plan that would, uh, that, 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 would, that, would, that would essentially raise the deficit? The president's talked a lot about the deficits over the course of his campaign in the White House. So uh, is he laying down the marker there? Uh, not at this time. I don't have any further announcement on that front. Fred. Oh, thanks, sir. Uh, a couple questions on Obamacare. Um, that there, uh, some, some governors today came out in favor of a sustainability approach that's been talked about among even some Republicans in the Senate. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, would the administration uh, outright oppose any type of Obamacare bailout for insurance companies? Uh, I can't imagine that it would be uh, something we would want to be involved in, but I would have to refer you to HHS specifically uh, on that and, and on that question. Uh, and, and secondly, um, the, the president tweeted uh, uh, in, in July, I believe, that uh, talked about taking away the Obamacare exemption for members of Congress and staff. Um, is there anything that would stop him from taking that action now? I mean, is uh, something that could, could be done executively? Why has that been acting on? I think that's something he is uh, certainly still considering. Alex? Uh, policy. Uh, the U.N. said uh, that last week uh, the Saudi-led uh, coalition in Yemen killed 42 civilians. Uh, is, the pre is the president concerned about uh, the humanitarian situation in Yemen? Uh, it's something that we're certainly uh, keeping an eye on, and I would refer you back to them for anything further at this point. Thanks, Sarah. Um, the uh, Kuwaitis are saying today that the Emir will be here next week to meet with the President. I just wanted to confirm that. And then uh, on the Russia diplomatic move, did the President initiate this? Uh, this was a decision made by the President, yes. And on the Kuwaitis, uh, I'm not ready to make an announcement on that. I'll have to check on the specifics of that. Sarah? Sarah, the President made clear that he believes all options are on the table when it comes to North Korea. and has seemed to indicate that the military option is certainly among them, but is negotiating still on the table? 
Absolutely, all includes all. So I, I think that would certainly uh, include uh, diplomatic, economic, and military options. And then, sorry, just one quick follow up, just as we are getting closer to Friday. Can you tell us whether the president still has confidence in Gary Cohn? Yes, uh, the president is working hand in hand with uh, Gary and the rest of his team on tax reform. As I've said uh, several times earlier today, that's a big priority for the administration moving into the fall, and Gary is an integral uh, member of the team leading that effort. Sarah, Sarah, April. Sarah, Sarah, on the issue of replacements, this president is so uh, dead, dead set on trying to make sure that he replaces and repeals Obamacare. What's happening with the website? Is there still active enrollment on that website? As far as I know, um, I'm, I'm not aware of any reason that it's not, but I'd have to certainly check into that. I, I'm not checking into the uh, Obamacare website daily, so I'd have to look into that. You're not actively encouraging people. You're more so saying repeal and replace. Uh, I think that everybody in the country knows that Obamacare is collapsing and that something still needs to be done and the administration is still very much committed to putting a health care system in place that actually works because we know Obamacare doesn't, it's not sustainable. So yes, we're continuing to move forward and look for ways uh, to help all Americans receive better care. The HBCU conference, um, is it possible, I asked last time, um, can you give us a list um, because we're still hearing more and more from other colleges and universities in the HBCU community were saying they're absolutely not coming and you say it's at capacity and you have a waiting list. Is there any way that you can share some of those names? Yeah, I think this, uh, the Department of Education is housing that, but I'll, again, I uh, will try to look into that. I meant to do that last Thanks, week. Sir. Thanks so much, guys. Happy Opening. Great day.